Welcome to A-Frame Lesson 2.4. In this video, we're going to cover a new concept called classes, which will allow us to model our A-Frame objects. So let's get to it. In video lesson 2.2, we saw how we could use functions to encapsulate the process of actually creating objects uh, in our virtual world. In this particular example, we created a create tree function that created an entity uh, which housed all the individual components inside, which included a cylinder and a cone. And then it added the tree to the scene. If you look at our onload function, we repeatedly called the create tree function in order to add multiple trees to our world. So let's see this in action. So you can see here we got three trees because we called the create tree function three times, each with different arguments for the position. So classes are going to let us do something similar to this, but with additional benefits. So let's get to our example. Uh, before I do that, though, I'm going to copy this code because we're going to need it. <laughs> All right, so the first thing I want to kind of introduce in this video is the concept of adding additional JavaScript files. Now, the benefit of doing something like this is that it keeps your code cleaner. Um, it lets the script.js function really focus on just the logic of what your virtual world is going to doing and let the other JavaScript files kind of handle the minutia of you know creating the objects, putting the objects in the world, and any additional behaviors that the objects might uh, need. Now because I created a new file, we have to go over to our HTML and then add that file. Now the order is important because the order in which you put the script sources are the order that it gets loaded. So if you load up your script.js, which has all your logic, before you actually load up the tree.js, which is actually going to have our model for the tree, then you're going to run into some problems. And if you want to, you could explore it yourself. You're going to get errors. <laughs> so if you get an error that says something about tree not found, it might be the order in which you loaded up your JavaScript files. All right, so we've loaded up our tree.js, which has nothing in it. We're going to, uh, that is the goal of this lesson. And then we load up our script.js, which will have our logic. So to create a class in JavaScript, you could simply write the word class. The next thing that is needed, or not needed, but it's nice to have, is something called a constructor. And what a constructor lets you do it lets you specify what needs to happen when a tree object is created. And this is the reason I copied my code from uh, lesson 2.2. I'm going to paste that here because that's exactly what we want to do. We want to create a tree as part of this tree class. And again, at this point, you might not see the benefit of this because you might say, well, lesson 2.2, we did this simply with a function. What's the additional benefit here? You'll see in, in, in a little bit. A couple of changes. Again, just a quick disclaimer, this, these videos for these A-frame uh, lessons makes a small assumption of you being familiar with some JavaScript. Now, if you're not familiar with concepts such as functions, classes, again, you can easily look them up. Um, the things that we're doing are not earth shattering, so you should be able to follow through anyway. Uh, but if you feel uncomfortable, there's definitely a lot of great resources that cover how to work with classes in just a traditional sense. So this word, this, no pun intended, creates an object for this class. And that's going to become important as we go through this video and future videos. So instead of using the let trunk or let tree, we're going to create a variable called this.object, which gets associated with the class. Other than that, I think at this point, I could do a little copy and pasting. And anywhere I see tree, I'm simply going to replace it with this.object. This.object is a variable. It's a variable of the tree class. Now, the additional thing I want to do is I'm going to take this part out, the idea of the position. So we've created an entity. We've added it to this class variable called this.object. Uh, we've created the trunk the same way. Uh, and then we added the trunk to this.object. Same thing with the cone. And then ultimately, we add this.object 
to the scene. So notice it's equivalent to what we were doing before, uh, with the exception of now we're using this dot object, which is the class variable, instead of this, you know, traditional, you know, let tree equal. Uh, let's go back to our script JS, and now let's go ahead and create a new tree. So let's say let t equal new tree. So one of the benefits of using classes over functions that you can see here, we can assign the whole class to a variable and then we can later manipulate it. So let's see what happens here. All right, so you'll notice that you don't see a tree, but if you recall, we took the position out, which means that the entity is going to get put at the default position, which is 0, 0, 0. So if I go to my world and simply step back a little bit, you'll see that it's there. Now you'll also notice that it's kind of flushed to the ground. That's because we haven't moved it. Uh, again, it's at that fault position of 0, 0, 0. So here's another thing that you can do with classes. You can add what are called behaviors, um, which in another way, it's also they're also called methods, they're also called functions. It's things that you can do to manipulate your object, being the tree. So let's allow us to be able to move our tree. <clears throat> now, this might not look like your traditional function because you might say, well, where's, where, where's the word function? When it comes to classes and you want to add functions to your class, you can simply start with the name. Again, the assumption here is that anything that is in your class is either the constructor, variables, or functions. So let's go ahead and move this object. Now notice how I said that word, this object. If you recall, there was this variable in our constructor that represents that whole entity. So I'm going to use this.object.set attribute. And now it's business as usual. Uh, let's do position x colon x, y colon y, and z colon z. Now in an earlier video, I have also mentioned that if this feels uncomfortable, this idea of x colon x, trust me, the computer doesn't get confused. It knows that the second x is the value from the parameter and that the first x is simply the key to this JSON uh, that we're going to assign the position to. All right, so let's go to our JavaScript and let's move this tree. So we'll say tree.move and let's move it to negative uh, 2 value of 1 and maybe negative 5. Alright, so you can see that the tree is over here. One thing to note, like I mentioned earlier in the video, one of the benefits of using classes is that it kind of extracts, abstracts the code away from the logic of the program. So here we simply instantiate a new variable t that's a tree and now we can simply move it. So all the you know, particulars of actually doing things with the A-frame objects is being left inside the class, and that's the class's job to handle that. All right, let's go ahead and create another function uh, that we haven't played around with much, but might be nice to explore here. And let me actually do it like this. So let's create a, a function called scale that's going to allow us to increase or decrease the size of our tree. Oops, scale. <laughs> so one of the reasons I chose the, the scale attribute is because it works identical to the position, identical to the rotation, except the difference here is that I'm going to have it scale equally in all three axes, so that way it doesn't distort. Obviously, you don't need to use the scale this way, but for this particular concept of being able to, you know, grow and shrink something, having it grow and shrink at exactly the same rate on all axes uh, is beneficial. All right, so for this, let's go ahead and let's create another tree. So we'll say t2 is equal to new tree. And let's first let's scale t2. So let's scale it by 2. So it's going to be twice as big as the first one. And now let's go ahead and move t2 over to, let's move it over to the positive side. And let's give it the same amount of 1, and let's put a little further back. Ooh. 
Oops. Uh, line eight. Oops, should have been an equal sign. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Now, at first glance, these trees might look the same size, but recall, this one's further back. So let's go in our world a little bit. And you'll see that we will hit the first tree and then we hit the next one um, that's twice as big. Now, if we wanted to kind of keep them uh, side by side so we could really make a comparison, and I'll move this one a little further to the right, you can see here that this tree is twice as big as this one. All right, so let's go back to our presentation. Let's review what we've done in this video. So we saw that classes uh, can be used to model our A-frame objects, but additionally, we can add things called behaviors uh, to our classes, which really kind of encapsulates not just the creation of the object, but also how the object should behave. We can then assign these objects to variables and then continually manipulate it throughout our world. So hopefully you're excited to model things in your world and enjoy.